from the bird catcher by the great Gail Jones. He kisses my mouth. He nibbles my tongue and lips. When he gets to the crocodile skin on my back, he touches it as if it were familiar territory. You're a tender, mysterious woman, and I'm an alien in my own country. We belong to each other. Catherine would love that love talk. In Portuguese, it sounds lovely. In English, it sounds like bullshit. <laughs> Take your pick. But I can't tell Catherine about him, though because one day I'd discover him staring down at me from some museum, this strange man, all black above the navel, all white below it, and people wondering what was, in the, what was the symbolism, what was the metaphor, and some woman saying, why, it's the country, my dear, and another, well, shouldn't he be white above and black below? I did get him to be braver, though, to go for a walk with me on the beach and even wear his bathing trunks. They don't know what manner of man I am, he whispers, or what kind of woman you are to be with such a man. In Sinadelo, in Sinanso, and I pulled the lounge beach chairs into the sun. The air was clear. I wondered if his white legs would sunburn. I rubbed Vaseline and cocoa butter onto them. This was the first time he'd been brave enough to wear swimming trunks. Of course people stared, they gawked. How could you expect them not to? In fact, I could tell nationalities by the way they looked at him. Americans were the first to gawk, to stand and gawk, and no bones about it. One American even took his picture, not up close, of course, but from a safe distance, took several pictures, and then came back and took another one. The English looked once and were done with looking. The French looked, were amazed and fascinated, but pretended they weren't looking. The Swedes looked, came over, and jovially discussed the matter with us. <laughs> the Germans looked, pretended they weren't looking, and pretended furthermore that there was nothing phenomenal in a man made thus, no different from any other ordinary human being. If he had a belly made out of a tin drum, they'd have pretended he was just like them. When they went back to their hotels, though, they wrote about him in their notes and feared and worried that there was such a stranger in the world and wondered whether the genes in the lower part of his body were different from those in the upper part. Italians came over and shook hands. His fellow Brazilians did all of the above. Some of the Catholics crossed themselves. His favorite was the man who took pictures. He'd gone toward the man the second time he came around, but the man thought it was to do some violence and ran. But actually, it was to ask for a copy of the picture of himself. It had never occurred to him to have anyone take a picture so he could see how he looked in the world. I must be a monstrosity.